take. This is actually take two. Ooh, girl, she's shiny. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Kylie, rhymes with smiley. Welcome to my YouTube channel, which is long overdue, but uh, quarantine's a perfect opportunity to start it. So here we go. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how I sew, darn, and tie my point shoes. I do the infinity ribbon, which is pretty efficient once you get the hang of tying it. Um, it holds your foot and your shoe better. I find that it wastes less ribbon, and it's something I've tried very recently in quarantine. Gotten a couple of questions about how I sew them and darn them and then tie my ribbons too. I know some people do like a taller darn, but these work for me. I've worn these a couple of times, so it's gotten squished down a little bit. And as you guys probably know, if you follow me on Instagram, I wear Russian point ruby. I don't know if that's how you say it. That's how I say it. I wear flex medium shank. Wow. I wear flex medium shank. Sometimes flex hard if they don't have flex medium, but generally flex medium works really well for me. I'll put anything that I forget in the description down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, ring the bell, turn your notifications on, and subscribe. I think I already said that. Wow. Okay. Well, here we are. So we're going to get started. Wow, that was, that was awkward. So right here, I have a new, brand new pair of point shoes from Russian Point that they so generously and kindly sent. First thing I like to do, I don't know, I'm like kind of OCD about it, but I like to take all my stickers off. So we're gonna do that. This is gonna take me a while. I'll be right back. We're back, stickers are off, we're ready to prep. What you're gonna need to start, well, what you're gonna need, a pair of scissors some pins that's dangerous a little needle and some thread if you choose to darn which i'm sure some of you do you're gonna need a darning needle a thick boy some thick thread for your darning some stretch ribbon i repeat stretch ribbon only thimble for safety reasons you don't have to have a thimble but i highly 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 recommend a thimble some point shoes and a good attitude. So I usually like to start out with darning just to get it out of the way. It hurts my fingers. I get like calluses and like blisters sometimes, but like gotta do what you gotta do. Start with darning. So I'm gonna start with one shoe, a uh, semi thick thread. This is what I use to darn. And we can compare that to what I use to like sew my shoes. So it's a little bit thicker. I don't know. Measure it kind of like the length of my forearm. Mm four times yeah i think about four times it doesn't have to be exact but you want to definitely have more than enough than not enough because it's really annoying to like start again you know so we're just gonna tie a big knot at the end of one string at one of the ends of this long string wow english yes so we're just gonna tie that a couple of times and you want to get it as close to the end as possible it just has to be big enough to stop it from going through the fabric all the way when you start the darning. So I have a few darning needles, but this is the one that works for me. It's like a medium thickness, like compared to these other ones, like super long. This one's like thick, like with four C's. Anyway, I like to use this like medium one. It gets the job done, does what I need to do. Sometimes they break, but I got in like a huge multi-pack. So I'll link that down below if I can find it. If I can't, then I'll just take a picture and you guys can, uh, DM me on Instagram or you can ask me for it. I'll just, I, I'll figure something out, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread my needle. Oh my God, it's gonna take a while. Mmm, thread, delicious. I'm gonna tie one knot. I'm not gonna double knot it because sometimes the thread breaks. So I'm just gonna do one knot just to secure it. And you're gonna also need a thimble. Be wary, try to find a strong thimble because one time I was darning, I, was pushing the needle through or trying to push the needle through and darning the tip of your shoe, especially if it's a hard shoe, it's hard to get through all the layers, which is what you want to do so it doesn't like fall off. And I was pushing through and I'll insert a photo right here. Um, and the needle, back of the needle went right through my thimble. You had one job, little fella, one job and it failed. So uh, just be careful of that. Be safe, be aware of your surroundings. Let's change my camera angle, shall we? Hello, we have arrived. So here's what we're going to do. All right, so this is the top of my shoe and this is the bottom of my shoe. I'm gonna start around the tip of my seam. Not all shoes have this seam, but it doesn't really matter where you start. It's just where I like to start it. So I'm gonna start by pushing it through, pulling it all the way. Oh my God, 
oh my god, I thought that was a bug, until we get to the end of it. And then, teeny tiny bit away. It doesn't really matter how much space you have in between. Sorry if you can't really see it. So we're gonna do the same thing. And then pull it all the way through. But before we pull it all the way to hit the shoe, and sometimes it knots, so I'm just gonna pull that out. Before we pull it all the way through, we're gonna leave a little bit of space, and we're gonna go in through the loop that we just made. And it's like you're beginning to tie a knot. And the first darn is complete. So you're just gonna repeat that all the way around the tip of the shoe until you get back to this point. I'll do one more to show you, and then I will cut to when I've made it all the way around. So push it in, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh my God, oh my God, my camera, I'm sorry. Pull it all the way through. So then there's our second one. So you're just gonna repeat that all the way around till you get back to this point and I will see you in a second. Hello. I made it all the way around. I go around three times. The tip of my point is you go around it three times. That is my personal preference, depending on how thick of a darn you want. The more times you go around, the thicker it'll be, but three is like the sweet spot for me, so I'm just gonna stick with that. Now, going around the second time, you're gonna go in between each of the first stitches that you made with the exact same method. So I'm gonna push, I'm gonna push it through, pull it, find the loop, Go through, focus, camera, focus, pull the knot and tie it. And it's gonna look like that. Let's do it again. So find the next stitch where there has not been one yet. Push it through all the way. You can do it, little guy. Pull it with all of the finger muscle you have. Thread it through underneath and pull it again. So now you're gonna go all the way around once more and go around a third time in whatever spaces you see left over. This is what the finished product looks like. So this is what your shoe is gonna end up looking like. This is not the pair I was sewing. I just didn't really want to sew a new pair because I just sewed a pair like two days ago. Um, and I'm not doing as much point work as I normally would be. Not doing as much point work as I normally would be during this time, so I'm gonna go through shoes as quickly as I normally do, but here's what it looks like. Focus. Eh, hopefully that's close enough for you guys to see. But you can see it's like a semi-thick band around the outside. But that's what it looks like, the first darn. So then you're just gonna do that to your other shoe. And the more you dance in them, the more even and flat they'll get. So don't worry about it being like bumpy or uneven. So now we're gonna move on to elastics so this is what the elastic is going to end up looking like i will show you again at the end but i'll show you how i cut and measure come up with a formula of how i like to measure it for my foot specifically it might not be the same for your foot but this is what i figured out in like all my years of dancing and sewing point shoes um usually i'll measure my elastic to match like the last pair i had so i just cut this by like laying my elastic spool which is my russian point RP woven elastic, 50 yards of it, much better value than buying them by themselves, guys. I highly recommend, same for ribbon. I don't use brush and point ribbon because I use stretch ribbon for my Achilles. And if you wanna do the infinity ribbon, you have to use stretch ribbon. There is no way to do it with the normal like satin ribbon that doesn't stretch because then you won't be able to get it over your foot. So if you're a satin gal, I'm sorry. And then I will take my shoe and I'll turn it inside out. And I don't want my elastic to go all the way down to the shank because then I step on it and it hurts. So we don't want that. I'm gonna take the elastic. Don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna put it on the side of the back seam, but not on the back seam. I'm gonna leave a little bit of an allowance on the inside. So I almost want it a little past halfway down the shoe to the shank. And then I'm gonna pin it. I will show you what that looks like so it stays in place and then you're just gonna try to pin this to match and get it as even as possible but what i've found for my feet and my ankles i don't know why this works but if i can fit the middle of my four fingers within the loop of my elastic where it's not super loose but it's not like squishing my fingers like it's like a good amount of pull but nothing too crazy that's like the perfect spot for me so like that's exactly where i want it to be so i'm gonna take it right here where i had it measured with my fingers 
Then I'm gonna pin it. Be careful not to pick. Be careful not to prick yourself when you pin. This is what it's gonna end up looking like. It's pinned a little more than halfway down to the shank on the inside. This is inverted, okay? If you'd wanna do it where it's like sitting in here and you're gonna stick the needle, it's gonna be really hard, but I mean, you do you. So now I'm gonna thread my needle with my regular thread. So I'm gonna take a good amount of thread. I like to get enough thread for the two sides of the elastic. So I'm gonna snip that and then I'm gonna thread. Mah. And then I'm gonna thread my regular needle. That's what that is. I don't know what's on my finger. Let's not talk about it. So what I do, I'm not gonna tie it on the front. I'm gonna put it all the way through so that it's like about halfway between the entire length of this piece of thread. I take the two ends of it so it's basically inside of a loop. This gives you a stronger, more reinforced kind of thread when it's pulling on your foot when you're doing anything on point and it doesn't break as easily. These are the two pieces. I'm gonna tie them at the top. I don't know if you can see that. And tie them together so that the needle is caught within a loop, basically, so that it's like double the thread, double the strength, double the fun. So I'm gonna like knot that a few more times than I knotted my darning thread because it's thinner and I don't want it to go through the shoe. So this is what it should end up looking like. There's two threads here in a loop around my needle. And what I'm gonna do is I go all the way down and around my elastics and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna start, it doesn't really matter what side you start on, it just depends on how I feel that day. So I can do this part without a thimble, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends on how lazy I'm feeling, but you can do whatever you're comfortable with. So I start at the top right below the seam where this is the drawstring compartment. So I'm gonna do it right below there so that when uh, the elastic pulls on my foot, it's not pulling from down here, so it pulls the entire shoe to my foot. Go in right underneath the little pocket for the uh, drawstring. I'm gonna pull it all the way through, and sometimes it gets stuck around the pin or the elastic, so just be aware. Make sure that the whole piece of thread is all the way through. It can be a little tricky at first with the double loop, but I swear, guys, it does not break. It's very, very strong. I like to go through the inner layer, but not the outer layer of satin because I think it looks nicer. But I mean, if you get it on the outside and it shows like I do a lot of the time on accident, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna work out the same. I'm just gonna keep repeating this, going all the way around, and I will show you what that looks like. And we'll be right back. Okay, just kidding. We're not at the end yet because I'm going to show you how I finish it off to get from this point to this point to finish off the tying. So I'm going to go through the inner layer of fabric. I'm not going to go all the way through to the satin. I'm just going to go on the inside layer. And if you go through the satin, it's really not a big deal. I try not to. So I'm going to go through the elastic twice and I'm still not hitting into the pocket for the drawstring because I don't want to stop it from being able to tighten around my foot. So you're going to go through a few times and then once you get to the edge of the elastic you are just going to go through one last time once on the inside of the elastic and then make your way back through the edge of the shoe back where we started we're gonna pull it through and then we're gonna tie a very large amount of knots so that it doesn't come out i'm just gonna do a few you can do as many as you want as little as you want but do be wary that the more knots you tie the bigger like knot bump you're gonna get and that's gonna be sitting on the back of your heel when you are putting on your point shoes so just remember that just in case that's something that bothers you because sometimes that bothers me I'm going to go through with one last knot, get my scissors, snip it off, and voila, one side done. This is what it should end up looking like on both sides. I'm just going to repeat what I just showed you on the other side. And it keeps my shoe on really securely, and it hardly ever breaks, because it used to happen to me when I didn't sew them this way. That is the end of the elastic portion of this video. Now we will be moving on to the ribbon. Okay, home stretch, ribbon, infinity ribbon, the moment you've all been waiting for. And I'm gonna show you how to tie it. It's kind of complicated, but not. It's tricky to get at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's super convenient. You don't have like that little like 
bump on the inside or outside of your ankle from your knot. It's spectacular. I find it really handy to have it this way and it's something I've learned to do in quarantine. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. But basically the first time I did this infinity ribbon, I put the shoe on my foot and I measured it out. I'll show you how to do that. But once you figure it out, you can just line it up with your last pair and just cut that. And I measured it. For me, it's like 22 inches. Leave a little bit of extra room for this little nub in here that's gonna go on the inside. Don't include that in your measurement. But I will show you how to do it if it's your first time doing it. 22 inches is not the end all be all. Everybody is different, so figure out what works for you. I will show you how to measure it for your own ankle. So now we're gonna do that. Say hello to my foot. Let's use the shaky camera angle. I'm holding this with my hand. Here, I have a spool of ribbon. So this is what we're gonna do. I usually put it inside my shoe. Yeah. But you can pin it or you can tape it. I'm gonna take the ribbon. I'm gonna wrap it around like I normally would wrap my point shoe. This is not gonna be perfect by any means, but that's okay. Practice makes progress, not perfect, ladies, okay? So I'm gonna wrap it around like I normally would my point shoe. See how long that would be. And I'm gonna measure it to about here, I leave a little bit of an allowance and I will cut it right here. You want it to be a little bit tighter than you think. Not a ton, but just a little bit tighter because you don't want it to be like loose like that on your ankle when you're dancing on point. I will show you how to pin and sew it. BRB. So I cut my ribbon and this is what's gonna end up looking like. It's gonna look like it's way too short, but I promise you it's not, it's gonna stretch. Remember, only stretch ribbon works for this. I'm going to show you how I pin and sew them. It's pretty similar to how I sew the elastic, so I will show you that. So how I like to pin these is I like to leave a tiny little bit of a nub on the inside of my shoe where I can sew. So I like to sew them where the inside seam is right in between my ribbon. So I'm just gonna place that where I think I want it. And then I'm going to pin it on a diagonal. You don't have to do it on a diagonal, but it looks cute. So I'm just gonna pin it like that and voila. Then I'm going to make sure that the top of the ribbon is not twisted. You don't wanna sew it and it be like that because you're not gonna be able to do the infinity loops. You're gonna make sure if I pinned this side that it would be straight. I cannot show you that at this angle, but I will show you. Then you're going to pin it on the other side and I will show you how to sew it. So we are back with the same thread, same double loop that we had before for the elastic and I'm literally gonna sew it the exact same way, but it takes a lot less time because there's not as much ribbon. So I'm gonna go underneath the seam of the pocket where the drawstring goes through. I'm gonna go underneath that with my needle through the inner fabric, not the outer fabric, but if you go through the satin, it's not a big deal, as I said before. I'm gonna go around, and uh, I'm not gonna make you watch all this, so I will be back after I've gone all the way around, and I will show you the finished product. Okay, and we are back after I've sewn one side of this shoe's ribbon. I'm just going to repeat that on the other side. I repeat, please, please double, triple, quadruple check that your ribbon loop is not twisted when you go to the other side. So make sure it is straight, it's not twisted, or else you will not be able to make it look as nice when you do the infinity loop, which is the appeal of this shoe. So I will show you the finished product of the ribbon, and then we'll move on to the grand finale of tying the infinity loop point shoe ribbon. Okay, now we're back. Here is the finished product. This is what the ribbons should end up looking like at the end. As you can see, I went all the way around both sides. Hopefully you can see that, I don't know. And look, it's not twisted. This is what I meant when I said I would show you. It's not twisted. If it were, it would look something like this. It's straight so that when I twist it onto my foot, it's flat and it looks beautiful. So now I'm gonna move on to showing you how to tie it. Hello, my foot again. We are back. I didn't film myself putting on the shoe because that would be hard to do one-handed and I figure all of you know how to put a shoe on. So we have the shoe on. Make sure you put it on with the ribbon on top of your foot instead of like behind. It doesn't really matter, but it just makes your life easier. So try to remember that. I don't know I'm gonna do this with one hand, but we will figure it out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ribbon straight, not twisted, not yet anyway. You sewed it on straight though. I know you did, I'm proud of you. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I need to change my camera angle, hold on. Okay, we're back, my shoe once again. Don't know how I managed to do this. My phone is literally hanging on by a thread. 
So I'm gonna pull up, oh, hello. You can see all my scratches. It's from me riding my bike. No, I did not fall off my bike and hurt myself. I just hit myself in the ankle with my bike pedal as I was walking next to it. Just quarantine things. So I'm gonna take my ribbon. I'm going to twist it onto the front of my ankle as if I was gonna tie it. You, normally you would take this behind your foot and then loop it around a couple of times to tie it. Take the loop, still crossed, around to my heel. Now it's behind my ankle. It looks like it's twisted, but I promise you everything will work out. I could twist it this way, but that's more twisting than we need right now. So you wanna twist it the way where you have one twist, but it looks like pretty neat. It's like one little fold. So now we're gonna pop that girly under our heel, and then we're gonna take everything underneath our ankle. We're still holding on to every single loop that we have. And then that loop that we took that looked pretty neat, pull everything back over our ankle. It's a little bit of a struggle, but you'll get it, especially if you have stretch ribbon. And now it should be on to the point where you can make it all pretty. It shouldn't be twisted. You just have to go around like the circumference of your ankle following the ribbon to make sure that everything looks super cute. But in the end, you should end up with something that looks like that and that is how you tie the infinity ribbon thank you guys for watching this has been really fun. I hope you were able to like understand my directions with the angles that I had going on here. But if you didn't, let me know in the comments and I will show you in a better way, better angle. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Kylie Dances. And I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the bell, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Peace out, Girl Scout.